Coming in at our number 10 spot, we have the Caspian Tigers. A team of scientists is hoping to bring back the Caspian Tiger, which is one of the largest cats ever to roam the earth. These beasts were generally smaller than Siberian Tigers, but don't be deceived, because males could weigh up to 240 kilos, and some adults grew up to 10 feet long, making them larger than most big cats seen today. The team's plan is to reintroduce them back to Central Asia, including Kazakhstan, using the Siberian Tiger, which is genetically similar to to the Caspian Tiger. The scientists say that the Siberian Tiger's phenotype proves adaptable to the arid conditions of the introduction site, and they have identified a promising site at the Ely River Delta and adjacent southern coast of Balkash Lake. During their prime, Caspian Tigers could be found in Turkey and through much of Central Asia, including Iran and Iraq. The Caspian Tiger extinction was due to human activity, including poisoning and trapping, promoted by rewards in the former Soviet Union until the 1930s, as well as habitat loss caused by irrigation projects during the Soviet era, which destroyed the woodlands and reed beds that were critical to tiger habitat and caused the cat's prey to disappear as well. Although plans to reintroduce this beast are in early stages, do we really want to bring back more deadly creatures? I don't know about that one. At a number 9 spot, we have the Saber Tooth Tiger. Now, with another tiger on this list, we have the Saber Tooth Tiger. But you may know them best as Diego from Ice Age. The Saber Tooth Tiger, also known as Smilodon, is one of the most fascinating and mysterious creatures of the past. With 11 inch long canine teeth, it's no surprise that they are one of the most fearsome predators during the Pleistocene era. Despite their intimidating appearance, the Smilodines' teeth were actually quite brittle and would easily break during combat. These beasts also weighed up to 600 pounds, which is roughly the same as the Siberian Tiger, which are still out there today. One unique hunting skill of the Smilodon was to pounce on their prey from trees and then plunge their teeth into their prey's neck. They would then wait for the prey to bleed to death and then they would consume it. So why would scientists want to bring back the saber tooth tiger? Beats me. But considering our technology nowadays, it just seems that scientists will go ahead and just resurrect every extinct animal in history. Don't you think so? At a number 8 spot, we have the Siberian Unicorn. When we hear the word unicorn, we usually picture a magical creature with a single horn on its head. However, unicorns weren't always just part of our imagination. In fact, there was once a real life unicorn that existed on this planet, introducing the Siberian unicorn. Unlike the majestic horse-like creature we imagine, the Siberian unicorn had a large hump on his back, similar to a camel, and it also weighed around 4 tons and were pretty terrifying. This creature roamed the grasslands of Eurasia thousands of years ago, but sadly, they went extinct around 200,000 years ago. However, newly found bones suggest that they may have survived until 40,000 years ago. The biggest problem researchers faced when attempting to bring this creature back to life was that the DNA they used was a bit too old. However, in 2018, new technology allowed scientists to analyze Siberian unicorn DNA for the first time. While it's exciting to think about bringing an extinct creature back to life like a unicorn, it's important to consider why the Siberian unicorn went extinct in the first place. So we probably shouldn't bring it back. At a number 7 spot, we have the gastric brooding frog. The gastric brooding frog was an incredible species of ground dwelling frog native to Australia. The species is notable for its very unique reproductive capabilities. Basically, the female would swallow her fertilized eggs, stop eating, and then allow the eggs to develop in her stomach until giving birth to fully formed frogs. Unfortunately, this frog is now extinct and was last seen in the wild in the 1980s due to the human introduction of pathogenic fungi. Despite its extinction, scientists are still studying this frog species in hopes of understanding its reproductive abilities. All the way at our sixth spot, we have the mower bird. The mower bird was a gigantic flightless bird that lived in New Zealand, weighing a whopping 510 pounds. Sadly, humans hunted these birds for their meat, causing them to go extinct somewhere in the 1600s. However, researchers at Harvard University have been able to reassemble the mower bird's genome and extract DNA from a toe bone in 2018. This opens up the possibility of bringing back the mower bird through genetic engineering by using the DNA from a museum specimen of the bird and then implanting it into the egg of a living emu or kiwi. The mower bird was not the only extinct animal to be considered for resurrection through genetic engineering. In the hump of our list, we have the diadon. Meet the diadon, the mother of all pigs. 
This prehistoric creature was the size of a rhinoceros and had an impressive set of teeth. Diodon lived between 29 and 19 million years ago and its fossils have been discovered throughout the United States. Adult Diodon had skulls that were about 3 feet long and they stood at an impressive 5.8 feet tall at the shoulders. But what's in a name? If you like the sound of Diodon, you're going to love its translation, Hostile Destructive Teeth. This is a fitting name considering just how impressive and dangerous its teeth were. In the past, Diodon was known as the terrible pig. However, as people began to understand just how hostile and destructive its teeth were, a name was definitely necessary. It's just amazing to think about how big and powerful animals were millions of years ago. And the Diodon is a perfect example of this. So, would it be a benefit to bring these guys back? I probably wouldn't want them. At a number 4 spot, we have the Tasmanian Tiger. Okay, I know this is like the third tiger already on this list, but I swear, it's the last one. So, a US biotech company called Colossal Biosciences has announced its plan to bring back the Tasmanian tiger back to Australia through de-extinction. The last of the Tasmanian tigers died in captivity in 1936, but Colossal Biosciences hopes to sequence the creature's genome and bring it back to life through bioengineering. The company has outlined a 10-step process that includes sequencing the creature's genome, computational biology, and establishing Establishing compatible cell lines for cell editing, as well as stimulating embryonic growth until it is ready for surrogate and eventual birth. Colossal expects this process to last a decade and plans to create a de extincted Tasmanian tiger ish thing that will eventually be dropped back into the wild. However, some researchers are skeptical of this whole plan, and ethical questions remain on how to handle the creature if it is successfully brought back to life. For those wondering if they are actually dangerous, the answer is not really. And most documents show that they are actually very very shy and avoided humans at all times. But hey, look at how they open their mouth. Terrifying. Number 3. The Beiji The Beiji, a type of freshwater dolphin, used to swim in the Yangtze River and was one of the few true river dolphin species in the world. The population began to decline due to China's industrialization and by the end of the 20th century, there were possibly only 13 left in the wild. Despite preservation efforts made in 2001, the Baiji went extinct due to human activity. The Baiji was the only member of its mammal family and had highly developed sonar and reduced vision. Its extinction highlights the danger human industrialization poses to the natural world. Number 2. The Steep Bison The Steep Bison was once a common sight on the vast steeps of Europe and Asia. A large shaggy haired bovine that weighed up to 900 kilograms and had long horns a meter apart. Early humans relied heavily on this massive creature as a source of food and its remains have been found in Neanderthal hunting campsites. But now, scientists are attempting to bring back this extinct creature through cloning. Since 2015, South Korean and Russian scientists have been working together to recreate the lost animal by attempting to clone a Canadian wood bison. Number 1. A Woolly Mammoth Last, but definitely not least, we have everyone's favorite extinct animal, the mammoths. These gigantic furry elephants with tusks have been extinct for a long time, but surprisingly not as long as previously believed. In fact, just 4,000 years ago, a thousand woolly mammoths lived on Wrangell Island, which is a small island in the Arctic Ocean. Scientists are using remains of woolly mammoths found on Wrangell Island to bring them back to life using stem cell technologies. Woolly mammoths lived in cold climates, so many of the remains are intact including a frozen woolly mammoth found in Siberia in 1997. Scientists plan to use their DNA from frozen specimens to merge with other animals like elephants. The extinction of mammoths, like many other animals, is primarily attributed to human activities like hunting and climate change. And really, we're just gonna have to wait and see if they actually do decide to bring these guys back. Number 10, Viper Fish. A viper fish is any species of marine fish in the genus Chaliotis. Viper fishes are mostly found in the mesopelagic zone and are characterized by long needle-like teeth and hinged lower jaws. A typical viper fish grows to lengths of 30 centimeters or 12 inches. Viper fishes undergo dial vertical migration and are found all over the world in tropical and temperate oceans. Viper fishes are capable of bioluminescence and possess photophores along the ventral side of their body likely used to camouflage them by blending in with the less than 1% of light that reaches to below 200 meters depth. Although it may appear to be covered in scales, viper fishes do not possess any scales. Rather, they are covered by a thick, transparent coating of unknown substance. Extremely large fang-like teeth give the fish a slightly protruded lower jaw. 
Number nine, ping pong tree sponge. The ping pong tree sponges have a distinctive appearance that sets them apart from other sponge species. They are typically spherical or oval shaped, resembling a ping pong ball in size and appearance. The sponge's surface is covered in tiny hair-like structures called spicules, which give it a bristly texture. These sponges are primarily found in deep sea environments, typically at depths ranging from 1,000 to 3,000 meters. They are often attached to hard substrates, such as rocks or other deep sea features. Like other sponges, ping pong tree sponges are filter feeders. They use specialized cells to generate water currents that bring in tiny plankton and organic particles. These particles are then trapped and digested by the sponge's cells, providing it with nutrients. Ping pong tree sponges have attracted the attention of marine biologists and researchers due to their unusual appearance and deep sea habitat. They are often studied to better understand the biodiversity and adaptations of organisms living in extreme environments. Number 8. Zombie Worms Zombie worms, scientifically known as Osidax, are fascinating and unusual marine creatures that have adapted to an extreme and somewhat gruesome lifestyle. These worms are found in the depths of the ocean, specifically on the bones of dead marine animals, such as whales that have sunk to the ocean floor. What makes zombie worms truly unique is their ability to extract nutrients from the bones of these carcasses. Zombie worms possess a symbiotic relationship with bacteria that live inside of them. These bacteria produce enzymes that break down the collagen and lipids found in the bones of dead animals. The worms absorb these nutrients, effectively eating the bones. This specialized adaptation allows them to thrive in an otherwise harsh and nutrient poor environment. These worms are quite small, often just a few millimeters long, and they lack a traditional digestive system. Instead, they rely entirely on their bacterial partners to help them extract sustenance from the bone. Number seven, Dumbo octopus. The Dumbo octopus, named after the Disney character Dumbo due to its ear-like fins, boasts several distinctive attributes that set it apart in the underwater world. These remarkable creatures, which belong to the genus Grimpotuthis, inhabit the deep ocean at depths ranging from 3,000 to 7,000 meters. Their most eye-catching feature is their ear-like webbed fins that resemble the iconic ears of an elephant. These fins are not only for aesthetics, but serve as efficient means of locomotion, allowing the Dumbo octopus to gracefully fly through the water, with a combination of gentle flapping and pulsating movements. In addition to their peculiar fins, Dumbo octopuses possess a soft, gelatinous body in stark contrast to the more muscular bodies of their close relatives. This adaptation enables them to move with greater flexibility and efficiency in the deep sea environments. They are often translucent or white, helping them blend in with the faint ambient light in their dark habitat. Number 6. Deep Sea Hatchet Fish Deep sea hatchet fish are captivating and peculiar creatures that inhabit the abyssal depths of the world's oceans. These fish have several unique features and adaptations that allow them to survive in the extreme conditions of the deep sea. One of the most distinctive attributes of deep sea hatchet fish is their flattened hatchet shaped bodies. This shape allows them to minimize water resistance as they move through the water, making them agile and efficient swimmers. Their silvery or metallic colored bodies are highly reflective, helping them blend into the dimly lit open water environment of the deep sea, while also making them less visible to potential predators and prey. Hatchet fish possess specialized bioluminescent organs called photophores, which are located along their bodies. These photophores emit light, and deep sea hatchet fish can control the intensity and direction of this light. They use this bioluminescence for various purposes, such as camouflage, communication, attracting prey, or distracting predators. Some species even have a light producing barbel hanging from their lower jaws, enhancing their ability to lure prey. Number 5. Giant Isopod these are abundant in the cold, deep waters of the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. The giant isopods are noted for their resemblance to the much smaller common woodlouse, or pillbug, to which they are related. French zoologist Alphonse Milne Edwards was the first to describe the genus in 1879. This was an exciting discovery for both scientists and the public, as at the time the idea of a lifeless or azoic deep ocean had only recently been refuted by the work of Sir Charles Wyville Thompson and others. No females were discovered until 1891. Giant isopods are of little interest to most commercial fisheries, but are infamous for attacking and destroying fish caught in trawls. 
Number four, Mariana snailfish. The Mariana snailfish is a remarkable and little known fish species and little known fish species that inhabits the deepest parts of the world's oceans. These snailfish have several unique attributes that enables them to survive in the extreme conditions of the Mariana Trench and other deep sea environments. One of the most distinctive features of the Mariana snailfish is its ability to withstand crushing pressures found at depths of over 7,000 meters. They lack swim bladders, which are gas filled organs found in most fish species to help regulate buoyancy and instead have a soft gelatinous body that may be compressible. Number three, barrel eye fish. The barrel eye fish, also known as the spook fish, is a highly unusual and mesmerizing deep sea creature found in the world's oceans. These fish are renowned for their transparent, fluid filled heads and remarkable adaptations that enable them to thrive in the extreme conditions of the deep ocean. One of the most distinctive features of the barrel eye fish is its transparent, dome shaped head, which provides a unique window into the inner workings of the animal. Within the transparent enclosure, their eyes are housed. These eyes are exceptionally sensitive and can rotate within the head to look upward and forward, allowing the fish to see all over its surroundings. Number two, vampire squid. The vampire squid is a captivating and enigmatic deep sea cephalopod that inhabits the dark oxygen depleted waters of the deep ocean, particularly in the mesopelagic and bathypelagic zones. Despite its ominous name, the vampire squid is not a blood sucking creature, but rather a unique and intriguing marine species. One of the most distinctive features of the vampire squid is its striking appearance. It has large reddish eyes with bioluminescent properties, which it uses to detect faint sources of light in the deep sea. Its body is covered in a dark webbed cloak that gives it a vampiric appearance, hence its name. This cloak is actually a soft gelatinous mantle that serves as a defensive mechanism when threatened. When disturbed, the vampire squid can wrap its cloak around its body, effectively hiding its appendages and creating the appearance of a larger, more menacing creature to deter potential predators. Number one, frilled shark. The frilled shark is a highly unusual and ancient species of shark that dwells in the deep ocean, primarily in the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Known for its prehistoric appearance, this shark exhibits a range of unique features and adaptations. One of the most distinctive characteristics of the frilled shark is its eel-like body, which can grow up to 6.5 feet or more in length. It is named after the fringed or frilly appearance of its gills, which differ from the typical gill slits found in most sharks. Instead of five pairs of gill slits, the frilled shark possesses six to seven pairs, giving its gills an unusual fringed appearance. Number 10, Pygmy Right Whale. The Pygmy Right Whale is a mysterious creature that has only been seen a few dozen times at sea, making it one of the rarest whale species in existence today. The scarcity of both live specimens and fossil data has prevented scientists from learning much about the diet, reproduction, and general behavior of these animals. We do know that Pygmy Right Whales are among the tiniest whales that can grow to a maximum length of roughly 21 feet. They are typically thought to be restricted to the chilly waters of the southern hemisphere and live in open ocean. In addition to being small, they have a snout that is arched and frowning. Researchers believe the pygmy right whale split from the baleen whale family between 17 and 25 million years ago as a result of the recent discoveries of fossils of the whale in Japan and Italy. Others continue to debate whether or not the whale is a member of the 23 million year old Seto theories family. Number nine, frilled shark. Frilled sharks have been hiding in the shadows for around 80 million years, lurking in the deep ocean's murky depths. These fish have barely changed in that period. The six fluffy gills of frilled sharks gave them their name. Despite being regarded as great white and hammerhead sharks as cousins, their relationship could not be further apart. They resemble a snake more than a shark because of their peculiar traits. Frilled sharks are thought to quickly lunge for their prey, consuming deep water fish and squid half their size whole, with an average of 300 pin sharp teeth and a hinged jaw. Number eight, coelacanth. The coelacanth, thought to have vanished 65 million years ago, was rediscovered in 1938. The coelacanth is a fish that is distinct from many others and is thought to be a member of a lineage that dates back 360 million years. The coelacanth, which may reach a length of six feet or more and has a lifespan of more than 60 years, belongs to the taxonomic group Ostechthes and eats cephalopods and other fish. However, what distinguishes them from other species is their peculiar evolutionary relationship with terrestrial four-legged amphibians. 
They are propelled by four fleshy fins that extend from their bodies in a manner akin to the alternate movement of fore and hind legs. Number 7. Lamprey in its 360 million years of ocean swimming, the parasitic lamprey fish has survived four significant evolutionary extinctions. Albeit it is currently primarily restricted to the Atlantic Ocean and a non-native population in the Great Lakes. They resemble leeches or eels in structure, and lack bones in favor of a cartilaginous skeleton with a single tail fin. They feed on other fish by suckling nutrition from their blood, much like these creatures do. Lampreys don't have jaws, but they do have a big suction like mouth with teeny horn shaped teeth along with a razor sharp tongue. Despite the teeth's frightening appearance, your main concern should be the tongue. The lamprey's teeth only serve to aid in attachment to its food, since the tongue accomplishes the majority of the labor involved in removing enough scales to access the soft flesh of the fish. But don't be duped by these bloodsuckers. For thousands of years, kings in England valued lampreys as a delicacy. Number 6. Horseshoe Crab The horseshoe crab, which dates back 450 million years and has survived five major extinction events, is one of evolution's most resilient species. Additionally, they aren't really crabs. In the subphylum Chelicerata, which also includes ticks, spiders, and scorpions, the horseshoe crab is categorized. The prosoma, or front shell, opisthosoma, back shell, and telson, or tail, make up the horseshoe crab's three body sections. The horseshoe crab, despite common misconceptions, conceptions that they are deadly or can bite you, uses its tail as a rudder and can even turn around on its back if it is flipped over. Additionally, horseshoe crabs have 10 eyes all over their bodies. No thanks. Number 5. Nautilus the Nautilus was a mollusk that ruled over the ancient oceans 500 million years ago, when the continents were still forming. Only a few of the 10,000 original species still exist today along the Western Pacific and Indian Ocean coasts. The 90 retractable sucker-free tentacles of chambered nautiluses have chemosensors that they utilize to detect the sense of fish, crabs, and lobsters. They grasp the art of buoyancy so well that we look to the nautilus as an inspiration for the submarine. Number 4. Jellyfish Everyone is familiar with the charismatic subphylum known as sea jellies, also known as jellyfish. Sea jellies have been around for at least 500 million years, if not longer, according to fossil evidence. They have soft bodies and are at least 95% water. Therefore, it is exceedingly difficult to detect their fossils, yet it is not impossible if they are preserved in fine silt. Sea jellies have a straightforward structure and are nearly devoid of all the characteristics that set them apart from animals, such as brains, hearts, and blood. They just have a simple neural network that enables them to sense their surroundings. Sea jellies are misunderstood in many ways, but one thing is certain, they're up for another million years. Number 3. Limpets The middle ordovician contains the fossils of these species, which have been on Earth for about 450 million years. They are limpets of several species and snails with conical and dish-shaped shells. They used to be a typical food source in coastal locations. Although they don't fit the criteria for this categorization, some species have a limpet-like appearance. Although the saltwater species were the first to exist on Earth, these animals can be found in both fresh and saltwater settings. The capacity of limpets to firmly adhere to rocks along seashores is widely recognized. Some limpets have additional means of attaching to rocks in addition to suction, like how some of them employ a mucus that acts like a glue. Number 2. Giant Stingray they are so powerful that you won't believe it until you encounter one. These marine animals are frightening, not only because of their enormous size, but also because they carry a poison spike in their tail that can be lethal. They have been around for a few million years and are located in the Mekong River in Northern Australia. According to reports, they've existed since the Ice Era and possibly much before. You want to remain as far away from one of these as you can if you encounter one in real life. They are notorious, so you don't want them to be the cause of your extinction in the wild. Number 1. Gharial Alligators, caimans, and crocodiles are old creatures that all have the appropriate appearance, but one species of crocodilian, the gharial, sometimes known as the gavial, wins the prize for most ancient looking beauty. Gharials have long, slender, sword-like mouths that are packed with buzzing teeth. At the tip of their snout, males grow a large, bulbous nose that gives them a rather amusing appearance. Although gharials have existed for millions of years in various forms, the current gharial is the last member of the lineage 
continued still in existence. Unfortunately, with less than 200 breeding gharials surviving the wild in Pakistan, Bangladesh, and India, it too is in danger of going extinct. Nope, nope, this thing looks like a Spider-Man villain. No thank you. Number 10, Adax Antelope. Also known as the white antelope, the Adax is well suited for desert life. Its hooves are adapted for walking on sand and it can obtain moisture from the plants it eats. Sadly, the Adax is critically endangered due to hunting and habitat loss. The Adax is superbly adapted to desert life. Its hooves are broad and splayed, which helps prevent sinking into the sand allowing it to move more effectively. Adax have evolved efficient kidneys that allow them to extract as much water as possible from their urine, conserving precious fluids. They can also obtain moisture from the plants they eat, reducing their dependence on external water sources. Unfortunately, habitat destruction and hunting have led to a critical decline in their numbers, as stated a little bit before. Number nine, dromedary camel. When one thinks of a desert, the first thing that comes to mind is a camel. The dromedary camel, which is said to be of Arabian origin, is the main Saharan camel. The interesting thing about these camels is that they store fat in their humps and do not water. They can drink up to 100 liters of water in 10 minutes flat. They make great domestic animals in the Saharas as they have great strength, endurance, and can go without water and food for a very long time. Dromedary camels, often referred to as the ships of the desert, are iconic inhabitants of the Sahara. Their long legs and padded feet help them traverse the sandy terrain with relative ease. The most remarkable adaptation is their ability to store and conserve water. Camels can drink large amounts of water in a short time, and their bodies are efficient at retaining this water, enabling them to survive for extended periods without access to water sources. Number eight, horned viper. Sand vipers can grow up to 50 centimeters in length. They venture only during the night and usually bury themselves in the sand during the day. Its venom will cause tissue damage, destroy red blood cells, and is hemotoxic. The horned viper is now an endangered species due to a constantly degrading environment. Speculations are the horns are for protection for the eyes against the sand, camouflage, or navigation through the sand. Number seven, Deathstalker scorpion. This scorpion species is one of the most venomous in the world. It's adapted to the desert's extreme conditions and is active mainly during the night, seeking shelter during the day to avoid the heat. The Deathstalker scorpion's venom is its primary defense and a tool for subduing prey. While its sting is dangerous to humans, it's also an adaptation for survival. In the desert where resources can be scarce, the Deathstalker scorpion has evolved to be an efficient predator. Like many desert animals, it's primarily nocturnal to avoid the intense heat. During the day, it hides in burrows or under rocks to regulate its temperature and moisture levels. Number six, Saharan silver ant. The Saharan silver ant is a remarkable insect that has evolved several unique adaptations to survive the extreme temperatures of the Sahara Desert. Its name comes from its silver color, which is the result of a dense covering of fine silvery hairs that reflect sunlight and help reduce heat absorption. These ants are known for their incredible speed, often reaching up to a meter a second. This swift movement allows them to quickly scavenge for food while minimizing the time spent on the hot sand. To avoid the harsh midday heat, Saharan silver ants are most active during the early morning and late afternoon. During the hottest parts of the day, they seek shelter in the shade provided by rocks or plants. Additionally, these ants have a unique ability to regulate their body temperature by adjusting their position on the sand, optimizing their exposure to the sun rays. Number five, sidewinding viper. The sidewinding viper is a snake species that has developed a distinct mode of movement to navigate the shifting sand dunes of the Sahara Desert. Unlike most snakes that move by slithering in an S-shaped pattern, the sidewinding viper uses a sidewinding motion, obviously. This movement involves lifting parts of its body off of the sand, forming a series of parallel tracks that minimize the snake's contact with the hot surface. This adaption is essential for survival in the extreme desert environment. The sidewinding viper is also well camouflaged with its sandy coloration, making it difficult for predators to spot it against the desert backdrop. Number four, scarab beetles. Scarab beetles are a diverse group of insects that play important roles in the ecosystem of the Sahara Desert. One well-known group is the dung beetles, which are crucial for maintaining the desert's balance by aiding in the decomposition of organic matter. 
Dung beetles feed on animal feces, which provides them with the nutrients they need to survive in the arid environment. To avoid the extreme heat of the day, scarab beetles are primarily active during the cooler periods of early mornings and late, and late afternoons. Some species have adaptations that allow them to efficiently collect and transport dung, which they use for food and to create nests. Their behaviors and adaptations contribute to nutrient recycling in the desert ecosystem, which is essential for sustaining life in such a challenging environment. Number 3. Fennec Fox the fennec fox is a small desert-dwelling fox known for its large ears, which help it dissipate heat. It's the smallest species of fox and has adapted to the Sahara's challenging conditions by being nocturnal and burrowing to escape the heat. The fennec fox's most striking adaptation is its large ears, which serve as a natural cooling mechanism. These ears have a high surface area relative to the fox's body size and help dissipate excess heat. Additionally, fennec foxes are nocturnal, allowing them to avoid the scorching daytime temperatures. Their fur is both insulating and reflective, providing protection from temperature extremes. Number 2. Egyptian Cobra The Egyptian Cobra is a venomous snake that can be found in parts of the Sahara. It is adapted to the desert environment and is often associated with ancient Egyptian culture and mythology. The Egyptian Cobra is one of the few venomous snakes in the Sahara. Its venom is used to immobilize prey and deter predators. It's a vital part of the ecosystem, helping to control rodent populations. The Cobra's camouflage and secretive behavior aid its survival. It's primarily active during the cooler hours of the day, seeking shade or shelter during extreme heat. The cobra's iconic hood is an intimidation display used to ward off potential threats. Number 1. Dorcas Gazelle the Dorcas gazelle is a small antelope that inhabits various desert regions, including parts of the Sahara. It is adapted to the harsh conditions by having efficient water conservation mechanisms and the ability to obtain moisture from plants. Dorcas gazelles are well suited to the desert due to their water conservation strategies. They have efficient kidneys that help retain water by producing concentrated urine, and in addition, they can elevate their body temperatures during the hottest parts of the day, reducing the temperature gradient between their bodies and the environment environment and minimizing water loss through sweating. They have adapted to consume dry, thorny plants that provide sustenance without excessive water content. Number 10. Giant Orange Creature Scientists in Ecuador were scanning the Amazon rainforest when they came upon an orange creature with eight legs and fangs. According to a study published on July 6th in the journal Ecology and Evolution, the creature is a new species and the first of its genus to be discovered in the nation. It is a form of giant crab spider. The unique spider was discovered by researchers from the University of San Francisco in Quito in the Yasun Biosphere Reserve, an area of protected rainforest in the northeast of the nation. It is regarded as one of the most biodiverse regions on Earth. Number 9. Kaititu Munde In the depths of Brazil's Amazon rainforest, a big pig-like creature that was previously unknown to scientists has been found. The animal, which can reach lengths of more than four feet and weighs about twice as much as other peccaries, has earned the moniker Giant until Mark van Roosmalen, a Dutch primatologist, became aware of the skins and bones of the animals, ended by local hunters, the huge peccary, remained entirely unknown to contemporary man. Four of the animals were photographed by van Roosmalen. The name Great Peccary, which lives in pairs, or Kaititu Munde, given to the animal by the Tupi natives, means great peccary in 2P. Number 8. Spectacled Bear One of the forest's most striking residents is the Spectacled Bear. This bear, despite its size, has a sweet and individual personality that makes it truly remarkable. The Spectacled Bear is not a small bear, measuring 5 to 6 feet long and rising impressively to a height of 3 to 3.5 feet at the shoulder. Its amazing weight ranges from 220 to 440 pounds. The adaptability of this bear, which lives in the tough Amazon environment, definitely stands out. It climbs trees with ease to find yummy delicacies like fruits, nuts, and honey because of its powerful front limbs and pointed claws. The unusual marks around the eyes that resemble a pair of spectacles are immediately noticeable on this bear. 
Number seven, Jaguar. The Amazon jungle is home to the largest big cat in the Americas, the jaguar. Without the tail, it ranges in length from 3.9 to 6.2 feet. Additionally, it has a shoulder height of 2.3 feet. Males normally weigh between 123 and 211 pounds, and girls range from 79 to 141 pounds in weight. The jaguar seamlessly blends into the rainforest's light and shadows thanks to its muscular form and striking rosette-like markings. The jaguar, which has a strong bite, may crush the skulls of peccaries, caimans, and capybaras. Its superior hearing and vision, as well as its agility and swimming proficiency, improve its capacity for hunting. Number 6, Amazonian Manatee. Introducing one of the ultimate aquatic heavyweights, the Amazonian Manatee. These amazing creatures come in very amazing sizes. They can extend to lengths of between 8 and 10 feet, and some of them even surpass the astounding 13 feet. They can weigh in at a massive 800 to 1300 pounds, making them truly aquatic giants. These beautiful animals glide through the streams of the Amazon with ease, their sleek bodies decorated with paddle-like flippers and a horizontally flattened tail. They are herbivores and have a voracious appetite for aquatic vegetation, consuming up to 8% of their own body weight per day. Number 5, Harpy Eagle. The wings of this bird can open out to a mass of 6.5 feet. The harpy eagle is no laughing matter, as it stands between 3 and 3.5 three and feet tall. It is one of the biggest and most powerful raptors there is, and believe me when I say that, its size and gorgeous look will wow you. This is where things really heat up. This eagle has enormous talons that are 5 inches long, that corresponds to the size of a grizzly bear's claws. The harpy eagle has incredible grip and power thanks to their magnificent talons. It can easily snare prey, and it isn't hesitant to pursue juvenile deer, monkeys, or sloths. That hunter is fierce. Number 4, Stingray. These enormous fish can reach incredible lengths. They can spread out to a whopping 6 to 7 feet, and some can go even much farther than that, over 8 feet. Imagine this magnificent animal effortlessly gliding along the riverbed while vigilantly guarding its own territory. Now hear this, the enormous stingray's wingspan is unlike anything else. It has an amazing 14 foot height potential. Yes, it is one of the largest freshwater fish in existence. This stingray dominates the Amazonian depths due to its enormous size. The problem is that coming across this magnificent species is rather difficult. Its presence serves as a reminder of the incredible variety and enigmatic treasures that are hidden beneath the surface of the mighty Amazon River. Number 3, Giant Armadillo. This creature can only be described in one way, as gigantic. It is between three and four and a half feet long, its hard plates protecting it from damage. The enormous armadillo does not fall short in terms of weight. It is the largest species of armadillo on earth, weighing an impressive 60 to 80 pounds. Let's also discuss the front claws. They are serious. They enable the enormous armadillo to create tunnels with astonishing speed. These tunnels can grow to a staggering 23 feet in length. These burrows serve as habitats for several forest animals, in addition to providing shelter for the armadillo itself. Number two, tapir. These animals are strong and muscular, with shoulders that are roughly 3 feet tall. They can extend to a staggering 6.5 feet in length. They weigh a substantial 550 to 900 pounds, therefore they are also not lightweights. Tapirs can travel throughout their habitat with ease and are skilled at making their presence known. They also have a somewhat distinctive appearance. They have a body that is formed like a barrel with an unusual snout. They can access leaves and graze on vegetation that other herbivores find difficult to reach thanks to what looks like a short trunk. The cool part is right there though. Tapirs are the rainforest's gardeners. They eat fruits and then defecate out the seeds whole. This promotes the dispersal of seeds and increases the diversity and size of the rainforest. Number 1, Capybara. The capybara is a fairly cool animal. They stand around 1.5 feet tall and can extend to a length of 3.5 to 4.5 feet. They weigh a substantial 75 to 150 pounds too. They are not delicate beings. Additionally, their large size makes it easy for them to move around on both land and in the water. In relation to the water, capybaras are expert swimmers. They are great swimmers thanks to their webbed feet and slender bodies. Additionally, they spend a lot of time in the water, diving and submerging themselves for extended periods of time. They resemble the monarchs of the aquatic kingdom who aren't fish. Capybaras are very sociable animals. They enjoy hanging out together and can establish groups of up to 20 beings. 
It appears as though they are a functioning little village. They are safer from predators when they are together, and they just appear to enjoy each other's company. They're also the cutest scary animal on this list. <laughs> Coming in at a number 10 spot, we have the Mega Piranha. Now you might think this just looks like a regular piranha, but no, this is actually the Mega Piranha, and it's way scarier than you think. Mega Piranha is a giant fish that lived 10 million years ago, and it grew up to three feet long. What's unique about it is that it had not one, but two rows of teeth, unlike modern piranhas. Scientists estimate that its bite could also be as high as 4,700 neutrons, which is more than twice as hard as a hippo bite. So all you gotta think about is those hippo videos where you have them crushing a full watermelon. Well, this fish can do double. And for more perspective, the average human bite is only 400 newtons compared to this 7,000. Mega Piranha lived during the late Miocene period in what is now South America. These prehistoric predators were much larger than their modern relatives and could weigh up to 20 pounds. So you could only imagine coming face to face with one of these juiced up piranhas. Let's just all be glad they're all extinct. At a number 9 spot, we have the short-faced bear. This is the short-faced bear, also known as Arctodus. This massive bear first appeared in the fossil records 1.8 million years ago, and it's just amazing to think that they survived all the way up until just 11,000 years ago, which is a pretty close call for humans. And thank god we didn't have to come face to face with these creatures. One specimen found weighed a whopping 2,100 pounds, and when they stood up on their hind legs, they could reach up to 12 feet tall. As well, their vertical arm reach extended up to a further 14 feet. So basically, this is like coming across an oversized, overweight grizzly bear that has the same reach as Giannis Antetokounmpo. Pretty terrifying, right? At a number 8 spot, we have the Titanoboa. A silent hunter once roamed deep in the South American jungle known as the Titanoboa. The Titanoboa snake was unlike any other animal in history, a true giant amongst predators. With its massive size and incredible strength, it was the undisputed ruler of the prehistoric jungle 60 million years ago. The death of the giant reptiles left a vacuum at the top of the food chain, and Titanoboa gladly stepped up to the plate. This prehistoric species grew up to 50 feet in length and weighed as much as 2,500 pounds. That's as long as a semi-trailer you see on highways and about as twice as heavy as a polar bear. So yeah, pretty terrifying. At its thickest point, Titanoboa was 3 feet wide, which is longer than a human arm. At our number 7 spot, we have the saber toothed tiger. Here is the saber toothed tiger. I mean, who hasn't heard of this beast? It's literally one of the main characters in the Ice Age movies. But let's get real here. This is not a creature you want to mess around with, and we should all be glad they are extinct. These creatures could reach up to 8 feet long and weigh in a whopping 660 pounds. And those fangs, that's where they get their name from, could be roughly 7 to 12 inches long. So it's really no wonder they are apex predators during their time. Did you know that they were not actually tigers at all? They are actually part of a group of prehistoric cats called the Smilodin. And while they may have been fierce predators, they have also some interesting social behaviors. Scientists have uncovered evidence that suggests that they may have lived in family groups and even cared for their young. While they may have not been the fastest runners, they were definitely strong enough to bring down the prey with one powerful bite. So could you imagine if these creatures were still around today? I don't know about you, but I think Mike Tyson would have owned one of these in his prime. At a number 6 spot, we have Dino Suches. Just when you thought crocodiles were already terrifying enough, we have a giant prehistoric crocodile known as the Dinosuchus. Dinosuchus, meaning terror crocodile, was a giant crocodilian that roamed the earth around 72 to 82 million years ago, during the late Cretaceous period. This prehistoric creature was likely one of the most terrifying predators of its time, and its discovery is shedding new light on the ancient world of dinosaurs. The Dinosuchus had teeth the size of bananas, which were perfect for crushing bones of large prey such as other dinosaurs. Paleontologists have found evidence of Dinosuchus bite marks on a number of fossil bones, including those of theropod dinosaurs, hadrosaurs, and even turtles. The bite marks were indicative of the ferocity of this animal, and scientists theorize that the creature likely used a technique known as the death roll to take down its prey. And you know, this method is still used by alligators and crocodiles today. To hunt, these creatures would lie in wait in shallow waters at the edge of the sea. And when an unsuspecting dinosaur came to take a drink, the dinosuchus would drag them 
into the water and proceed to tear them apart with his powerful jaws. What makes Dinosuchus particularly interesting is that it outweighed even the largest theropod dinosaurs at its time, making it the chief predator in its ecosystem and possibly the largest crocodilian ever known. Imagine it still lurked our waters. In the hump of our list, we have the Anthroplora. Are you afraid of little centipedes? Well, you're gonna hate this guy. Introducing the Anthroplora. Anthroplora was a giant millipede that lived during the late Carboniferous period around 299 to 318 million years ago. It is considered one of the largest land invertebrates of all time, with some species reaching up to 2.5 meters in length and over 30 centimeters in width. It had a segmented body that was covered in a hard exoskeleton, which protected it from predators. Each segment of its body had two pairs of legs, giving it an impressive total of about 236 legs. It likely moved by undulating its body in a wave-like motion, using its many legs to crawl over the forest floor. Fortunately for all the meaty animals, Anthropora was a herbivore, and probably fed on the lush vegetation that existed during this period, such as club mosses, ferns, and horsetails. At number 4 spot, we have the terror birds. Imagine racing across the vast Argentinian plains and you see a strange feathery bird towering over you. As you walk up to it, you see it pecking its prey to death with a hooked beak mounted on a head as big as a horse's. These were the terror birds, the most dominant flightless bird ever to exist. And let me tell you, they truly lived up to their name. These creatures were not only tall, 10 feet to be exact, but were also fast and fierce, embodying the power of their predatory dinosaur relatives before them. The terror birds were the only line of carnivorous flightless birds ever to exist. <laughs> Luckily, these specimens were kept in the Cenozoic era some 62 million years ago. But if you wanted to imagine these, just imagine an overgrown ostrich with a beak that could literally crush your skull. At number 3 spot, we have the Ecolepterus. Three words, giant sea scorpion. Or four words, less tasty looking lobster. That's right, this eight foot looking anthropod lived in the water and had pincher claws. Many of them looked eerily similar to the face huggers from the Alien movie franchise. They are pure nightmare fuel. Ecleptors had segmented bodies with multiple specialized limbs, some with spikes. They had spring loaded claws to snatch a fish as they passed by, with the largest having an eight inch spike claw. Smaller sea scorpions are known to have crawled ashore to mate and even shed their outer skin. Imagine finding the molt of one of these monsters on the shore just before going swimming. Already with a sense of dread and paranoia, you distance yourself from the shore, and then you see a shadow in the murky waters. At a number two spot, we have the Emerald Jewel Wasp. The Emerald Jeweled Wasp has the ability to turn cockroaches into zombies. Yep, you heard that right. The wasp manipulation of the cockroach is a truly remarkable but very horrifying process. These wasps reproduce by stinging a cockroach and paralyzing it with its venom. The first sting targets the first thoracic ganglion, which is part of the central nervous system. This paralyzes the front legs of the cockroach, then the wasp delivers a second sting, this time targeting the brain of the cockroach. The stings aren't meant to kill, but to give the wasp control over the cockroach, turning it into its own zombie. The wisp then bites off the head of its antennas, and then it leads the half-paralyzed brain-dead cockroach along by these antennas, using it as a lead towards its burrow. Inside the burrow, it lays eggs inside of the roach in a place known as the coxal plate, then buries it alive. While in its tomb, the larvae will hatch from within the cockroach, and over a period of a week, they will begin to feed off of its still-alive cockroach from the inside. Once it's done eating, it will eventually burst out of the cockroach in a manner very reminiscent of the famous scene from the movie Alien. Coming in at a number one spot, we have the Bacillosaurus. When we see whales now, we see them as gentle giants. But back in the prehistoric times, these large creatures had very terrifying teeth. This animal was the Bacillosaurus, a prehistoric whale that lived between 40 to 34 million years ago during the late Aeocene period. The name Bacillosaurus, which means king lizard in Greek, is fitting for this formidable creature. Measuring up to 70 feet in length and weighing between 10 to 15 tons, the Bacillosaurus was one of the largest marine animals of its time. Its body structure, more eel-like than whale-like, caused initial confusion among scientists and earned it the name Sea Serpent. Bacillosaurus also possessed a unique physical feature with its blowhole located on its snout. Unlike the more primitive whales that had it at the tip of their snouts, or the modern whales and dolphins that have it located between or behind the eyes. 
But the worst thing is, is that these creatures were the very top predator in their environments. They basically preyed on sharks and all other types of other predatory fish. And the reason why this is known is because some of these animals are found with the bite marks of this creature. Well, these are the top 10 scary creatures we should pray never come back, part two. What'd you guys think about this list? Leave a comment down below with your thoughts and some suggestions for some future videos. We would really like to know. I'm your host, Andrew, and be sure to click that like button, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you never miss a future video again. Hope you guys have a scary day.